So this video should have been done last last two weeks, but I was super busy with my family occasion that I did not do it, and um, I unfortunately should have done it last week but i was searching for my lost wallet so i will not get into that and yeah this video will be about the um, vital's title hopes and it's part two the first part i have told you i have uh, the first part was already posted three three weeks ago three weeks ago before the japanese Gron Pri. Okay. So now it's after the Japanese Grand Prix. So should okay. Uh should I forgot to list uh I forgot to write down the championship points for the drivers and teams. Yeah. Uh, can I? I can only remember Vettel's and uh, Hamilton's uh, championship numbers, but the yeah, the four drivers I forgot. So maybe I have to Google it while I'm doing this video. And um, since my other phone is um out of service for tonight, I might have to use my iPad. Yeah. Oh yeah, but by but, but, by the way. Uh, I have to. Oops. I. I. Yeah, this is a low budget video, so mind my my mind mind the low low budget editing, and I usually don't edit my videos to make it more interesting. But yeah. I don't know how to edit so usually I don't I just post the unedited one so this will be posted right after I end this video but first let's google because I can only remember uh, uh, Hamilton's championship lead is 67 points so uh, the difference is 67 points to Vettel. Vettel finished fourth in the Japanese Grand Prix. So yeah, wait. So it's 300 and if I'm not mistaken, it's 360, 50 something, right? Uh, wait. Vettel's points tally plus 67. Point the 67 point lead that Hamilton has so it's 350 something right oh 331 sorry okay okay I got that wrong but I remember I actually remembered a couple of weeks back but because uh, yeah I delete the video so yeah I forgot so uh, Hamilton has a 67 point lead now so okay wait before I start getting into the Hamilton and Vettel battle let me google the points tally for his team for Vettel's teammate for the two red bull drivers and for a certain Valtteri Bottas who is now third in the championship with over 200 points if I'm not mistaken, for the uh, for finishing in um, in sec in yeah, he got 18 points in the last race. In the last two races, he got 36 points, I think. Yes, because in um, Russia he got second place. That is worth 18 points, and it was one nine something, right? One eight one eight. Uh, nine, I think. If I'm not mistaken, one eight nine. If one eight nine, if you plus with eighteen is um. Sorry. One eight nine. One eight nine plus 
starts with eighteen is should be two O seven right ya two O seven so (uh) okay two O seven and his he has a lead worth how many points compared to (uh) his points difference compared to Raikkonen is (uh) should I Google first before I make assumptions of Raikkonen's points tally. Uh, where's Mister Google on my iPad? Uh, eh, Mrs. Google, sorry. Ah, Google. Actually, it's not my iPad. It's my mother's, but he gave it to me for s- some reason. So, uh, drivers. Standings. Ah, okay. Have to double check the spelling. Uh, Formula One. Yeah, baby. So if I'm correct, Bottas has two hundred and seven points. If I'm correct, but. Just confirm it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Mm-hmm. Yes, Bottas has 207 points. So, 207 points. Okay. And the last two races, Raikkonen has 20 points. So, Raikkonen is on 196 points. So it's around how many? The point difference is around four plus seven, eleven. Okay, eleven. So yep, eleven points for for the point difference between third and fourth. Actually, third is open. Uh, yeah. According to my calculations, third place is up for grabs. Because, because Verstappen, if Verstappen wins, we jump into third place. And Verstappen now has one hundred and seventy three points, so twenty ah twenty over twenty points behind Mister Bottas. So it's. Is around twenty something points, thirty four points behind Bottas, so it's just over race win. So if Verstappen wins the ne- the next race, he will jump from his current position is fifth in the driver standings to third place. But, but, if Bottas retires in the next race, and I, yeah, if Bottas retires, but according to my statistics, Bottas has a, even though Bottas has not win a race. But he has finished on uh, the podium quite a few times this season, so. But he's not safe with a thirty-four point gap to fifth place, so yeah. I'm not talking about the championship rivals yet, so yeah. I'm just talking, uh, yep. So yeah. So Raikkonen, if he finishes. As you guys know, if he finishes the next race in whatever position, and Verstappen wins the race, Raikkonen will sadly be in fourth place. Uh, 
let's see hundred and um, seventy three points for a win is okay one eight nine one nine eight sorry one nine eight one nine eight wait wait one nine eight one nine eight oh shit wait 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 one nine eight no okay in for example okay one nine one ninety eight points I think he will not beat Botas he will close up get to Botas if he Verstappen wins but Raikkonen will take back third place if Bottas retires and he finishes anywhere in the podium on the podium uh, so sorry not in on the podium so it's um 200 wait, wait. let's see if he finishes in second or third place first let me calculate if he's finishes in second one nine six plus mm, the magic number equals to 214 so he will have he he will have a seven point lead over Bottas for third place okay but if he finishes in second place that is um you deduct three points it's it's hundred two hundred and eleven points so he will have uh, around uh, four points ahead of Bottas only but if Bottas retires and Raikkonen f or if Bottas retires and Raikkonen finishes either first or uh, sorry either second or third will take Bottas's third place in the championship standings because Bottas's points difference to Raikkonen is 11 points but for the for the two Mercedes and Ferrari drivers I'm not expecting them expecting them to retire in the next two races or the next uh, the, the, the uh, next couple of races towards the end of the year but maybe a few skirmishes here and there would be great to watch would be great for viewership since um, someone would be wrapping up the championship if Hotel fin fails to finish on the podium <laughs> in second in uh, in Austin, so he will wrap up the championship. So that will become later. But now, sadly, Ricardo he has had a lot more retirements and a lot of uh, points finish off the podium. So now. His gap is almost 40 points behind uh, his teammate. Yeah, his gap is around 40 points behind his teammate. Sorry. Minus. Yeah, Bottas, uh, Verstappen, and Ricardo is driving for Red Bull. So he's behind his, he's almost 40 points be, behind his uh, Red Bull teammate Ricardo. So Ricardo's point steady is, okay, minus, oh sorry, he is 27 points behind his teammate, sorry, almost 30 points, not 40 points as I mentioned, sorry, I miscalculated. So yep. Is around 27 points in the difference so now okay let's see Vettel wins okay the next race a win would take Vettel up to 300 something right points uh, plus 
but if uh, Hamilton finishes in second okay. it's around Plus Eh One one three Sorry Three three one sorry Plus Eighteen Sorry It's Three hundred and forty nine points So that three hundred and forty nine points Will be accumulated Down Around to down to 50 right if I'm not mistaken so he will inst he will lose he will have a 50 point lead his 3 DNF buffer is not enough for him to win the championship unless if Vettel wins eh, Vettel fails to finish in second place in the next race so What I was going to do? Ah yes! Now I remember 349 If Hamilton finishes in 2nd place Minus With Vettel's 25 points If he wins in Austin Is 60 points hey, whoa okay I sorry I thought it was 50 points 60 points so the 3d nf buffer is uh yeah it, it creates a yep it's actually a wrap to the title but but let's see Hamilton wins the next race he is on 349 and Vettel finishes on the podium but not in second place so that 264 points you plus with 15 you get 279 points he needs a 75 point lead right uh, Hamilton needs a 75 point championship lead Right, so Let's see 279 points for Vettel Sorry 3, 4, 9 Minus 279 Maybe Right, 279 points. Wait, wait, wait. 64. Oh, yeah. Two, 279, sorry. It's 70 points. Yep. And he needs a 75 point lead over Vettel to win the title in Austin. But if Vettel finishes in third place, Finishes in third place. I'm going to the lucky guy that actually can wrap up his title. He does not need 75 a 75 point lead to wrap up his title. He just needs a 70 point lead in the championship to wrap up his title.
seventy one gig he's very lucky to be in a com~ that freaking competitive car if he I bet he can win a lot of races or even beat schumacher's pole record or even equal schumacher's rec~ re~ record if he's not driving the silver arrows at all he's a lucky guy on the grid and everybody regard him as one of the best drivers on the grid just because he has a competitive car if you throw him in, in a red bull i assure you he can he, he can equal he can equal schumacher's record or even you did you 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 force him to drive the the uh the team from Maranello he can even equal Schumacher's record of wins total wins ninety one now he has a he has seventy one wins I think if I'm not mistaken so lucky to be in a competitive car he has destroyed Schumacher's pole record not a surprise because he is in 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 a competitive car so yeah not a surprise and yeah so now <sighs> 70 points is enough for him to wrap up the title and make with a look like a brute uh, an overcooked burrito uh, an overcooked burrito mexican burrito sorry since the uh, next race after austin is in um, mexico so uh, 70 points is enough there is more than three retirements I find it weird if the commentators are after the Singaporean Grand Prix said a two retirement buffer is enough for 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 Hamilton to win the title. Why didn't the Mercedes team allow Bottas to win the ti- to win the race? Sorry, in Russia. That means a two retirement buffer is not enough for for West, uh, for Hamilton to win the title. He needs a three retirement buffer. Now he has, oh, he almost has a four retirement. He he has, oh, he almost has a. He, now he has a three retirement buffer. Confirm with a 70 point lead if he wins the race and if he finishes it in third he can wrap up the championship in Texas He's so bloody lucky to be in a competitive team and car So Yes uh, yeah. Points is not enough. Sixty-five points is not enough. Seventy points is enough. Let's see if I, if eighteen. Two six four plus eight. I'm just calculating if you finish in second place. That will be 282 points
so a sixty seven point lead is not enough for him to wrap up the title in still if Vettel finishes finishes in second and he wins the race he at least needs another three points he at least yeah he needs a seventy point buffer that is almost is almost equivalent is almost equivalent to three uh, three retirement it is actually equivalent to a three retirement buffer if he has a seventy point lead yeah as I mentioned just now So now I will move to the championship lead. The championship, the drivers, uh, the constructors championship. After this, I will do constructors championship standings. Ferrari is still in for the constructor side on the other hand so yeah and if he like you know, would have stayed in Ferrari for next season I would have been really ecstatic so now he's going to where to where Leclerc is right now and Leclerc is moving to Ferrari so I'm still happy that Leclerc is going to Ferrari but I'm sad that Raikkonen is not in the front seat class anymore. So, so, so let's calculate. Five hundred and thirty-eight. Hmm. points. They have a chance to win the constructors title and it will be the 18th 7th day 18th or 17th title they are on 16 constructors title right yeah it will be the 17th constructors title if they if if they win this season and uh, and um, Red Bull's points tally uh, is one hundred and forty six plus one seven three equals to three hundred and nineteen points, right? Yeah. So third place is secured. They are way ahead of Renault on 92 points right yeah so the difference between Renault 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 sorry Renault and Red Bull is They are not going to catch Red Bull with that whopping amount of points tally. So now we are going to look at the midfield battle and the constructor title. So, uh, okay. So now. Actually, if Force India was not excluded from the team, eh, sorry, from the constructors' title, they would be in first place. But they were excluded after the Belgium Grand Prix, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, no. After the Hungarian Grand Prix, they had they had around. Uh, Almost a hundred points, right? Yeah, almost a hundred points. Yeah, they were in fast, comfortably. 
but uh, oops but they were excluded and um, Stroll's team yeah, Stroll's father bought over uh, saved the team from bankruptcy thanks to yeah and Stroll has a seat for next season in the team with Chaco in the team I'll not I'll not I'll not go further into that now ah uh, yep so now they are currently behind uh, McLaren Renault on 43 point uh, on K yeah S- yep they are behind McLaren right yeah my so they are behind McLaren if not they would have been in a tight battle with has uh, with Renault and has for the first for the second best constructor after the top three. So yeah, for the best construct sorry for the best constructor after the top three. So yeah. So in the next few races. Can they get enough? I think Hess will not exceed 100 points in the next four races. The points tally. Oh, they will. They are on 84 now. Uh, Renault, I can guarantee you, by the time we reach uh, Brazil, they are uh, over. They, by the time we end in. We end the Singapore, uh, the Mexican Grand Prix. They, they will have more than uh, by the time the we end the Austin Grand Prix, they will have more than a hundred points. So yeah. So yes. Uh, so um, yeah. So. Force India now is in a battle with uh, McLaren for six. McLaren is on fifty eight points, so they are around fifteen points behind McLaren. I think they can outscore McLaren. They consistently finish in top seven in the next two races. In the next two races, yeah. So, yep. sadly, um, sadly, the, the bottom three teams are. Uh, Sauber used to be a back market team actually Williams used to be a championship winning team but now they say uh, they have downgraded from a, the, a championship winning team to a midfield team now they are hanging around with the back markers yeah the leg, legs of the Rosso and Sauber but Sauber if it's not because of Leclerc, they will not collect more than 25 points in the Constructors Champion Chip so then they have a whopping 20 point gap to Williams and Williams is dead last out of the 10 um, driver drivers okay. out of the 10 drivers yeah, did last. Eh, hey, sorry, not drivers. Constructors, sorry. Uh, yeah, they ha- only have seven points on the board. So, mm, yeah. The days of Williams, Renings, the days of Williams, Renault, and McLaren. Were battling with 
championship with the legs of Ferrari are long gone now this now they are hooked in a battle with the Austrian team and the German team yeah so so yep sorry if the video is so long I split the video into two uh, yep, uh, the team and the constructors we have done all, and now let's see races. Let's see how many retirements each of the driver has, each of the top four driver has.